So go ahead and roll the tape. <laughs> Last year I drove off a cliff. With all the talk recently of the so-called fiscal cliff, it occurred to me that I had special expertise in the matter. And I, any idiot can drive off a cliff frontward, but it takes special talent to do three pirouettes and go over backwards. <laughs> Seriously though, my, the weight of the batteries and combined with the bad road conditions formed a deadly mix. You could say that my hybrid actually tried to kill me. So in a metaphorical sense, we could ask if our technology is killing civilization. When visiting England for the first time, Gandhi was asked what he thought of Western civilization. He replied, I think it would be an excellent idea. <laughs> But for our purposes here today, I'm actually referring to civilization in a colloquial sense, such as the collapse of civilization that will occur if we allow climate change and resource depletion to continue. Civilization may not be in danger of immediate collapse, but scientists are already asking if we're in the midst of a sixth mass extinction this planet has experienced. This is particularly important because we don't know the overall effects of the growing number, uh, that the growing number of extinctions will have. Moreover, I would say that we are in the midst of a shift in our cosmology greater than the one brought about by C Copernicus. We're beginning to see that not only are we not at the center of the universe, we're not at the center of creation. <clears throat> For example, we know that if all the organisms that live on our bodies were removed, we would die. We are part of an interconnected web of dependent living systems. Collective intelligence is the emergent condition that arises both out of these realizations and that also makes them possible. After 18 years at the Institute for Theoretical Physics, I've come to realize that what makes it special is not simply the caliber of the physicists who come, but the depth of communication that takes place. The why of communication becomes clear. The manifestation of ideas is made possible through dialogue. Communication across the internet is increasing at a logarithmic scale. And as the bursts of communication, opportunities for collective intelligence multiplies. As Sheldon Renan says, everything wants to be connected, including bacteria. Eshel Ben Yaakov calls it collective navigation. Bacteria assess problems via collective sensing, then recall past experience, and finally execute distributed information processing across 109 to the 12th bacteria in the colony. This is a supercomputing exercise that dwarfs our current capabilities. The backbone of the internet shows amazing similarities to this network of bacteria. Just like the communication strategies of bacteria, the internet is a network of networks which we're beginning to use to solve problems. For example, this is iWire, a crowdsourced approach to mapping the neural networks in the eye. By engaging the public in, in uh, citizen science, Sebastian Sung is tapping into the collective intelligence of the public and accomplishing something extraordinary mapping the connectome in the neurons in the back of the retina. By mapping these connections, we begin to understand how the connections in our brains affect autism, schizophrenia, and perhaps even the difference in personalities. Folded is another even more uh, interesting example. The gamers, this is a game that was set up and allowed gamers to solve a problem with a retrovirus in a few weeks that had stumped scientists for decades. Collective intelligence is not to be confused with a global brain. This is not Skynet, something that's the, a dystopian vision that giant communications network in the sky. That belongs to Hollywood. Collective intelligence is a distributed and therefore not easily manipulated. And as appealing as a global brain idea may be to some, that's not the point. In fact, it helps distinguish it from our overly mechanistic view. It's not some Wikipedia tree that grows in the sky. It's more of an emergent phase of human consciousness that allows everyone to participate and develop their potential. The best way to think of it is as, an immort as a form of communication. The, a good metaphor is the large, very large array, which as individual instruments are not that powerful, but collected into an array, they form something that previously was, was impossible. Looking back into the earliest parts of the, of the universe and uh, something that could, could not be t uh, done previously. In the same way, collective intelligence 
provides a powerful new tool for tackling many problems of facing humanity, from climate change to resource depletion and extinction. It's a commons that everyone can participate in and the results everyone can benefit from. The Arab Spring and Occupy are other examples of collective intelligence and action. Facebook pages led people to discover common goals and take action and coordinate their actions. As someone deeply involved in technology, I'd love to say that it will magically rescue us. But as you already know, technology itself poses as many challenges as solutions. Just as your hybrid won't solve climate change, the internet may help spread collective intelligence, but it won't provide a deus ex machina. Now, <clears throat> I'm sure that Michelangelo is rolling in his grave, but I couldn't resist this perfect parody. The great thing about collective intelligence is that it often comes with a wicked sense of humor. In conclusion, we're not heading over a cliff. We can choose to learn from other peak empires and live gracefully on the cliff, which is why neither our hybrid cars nor our technolog technological gadgets will save civilization. Perhaps if we learn to apply our collective intelligence in time, we stand a chance of saving, or to paraphrase Gandhi, creating civilization. Thank you. <laughs>